Hi, in this video we're going to go over looping in C++, um, using C++ Builder. And so uh, looping, uh, you know, this is when we start to, to do some programming and we're, we're doing some logic here and stuff like that. But this is really simple stuff that we use every day. So don't let the, you know, the way it looks uh, throw you for a loop, no pun intended there. But um, so looping could be, uh, we've got a couple different nuances, a couple different ways to do this, right? And, um, you know, one example would be, I don't know, um, while I'm at a red light, I'm going to adjust my radio. And, um, you know, while I'm not at a red light, I won't adjust my radio. So we're just going to have some simple rules that we want the computer to follow. And it's stuff that we would use, you know, every day. And we'll, we'll go into the nuances. There are a couple different loop, looping structures that we'll go through. And I'll try to point those out for you. So what we have here is just a regular form. I've got two labels and a button and again if we double click the button here it takes us to this uh this function and we'll go over functions in another video but um, we're at this function and what we want to do is we want the computer to do something a set number of times so we'll go ahead and create a couple variables we're going to create an integer let's call it i and we're going to set it equal to zero and then we're going to create a character car uh, and we'll call this ch and I'm not going to set it to anything yet. Uh, and the first loop that we're going to use is called a for loop. And, you know, um, uh, you could think of if I were creating a program to do flashcards, right? And I'm, um, let's say I'm trying to teach somebody how to do the multiplication tables 210. So it would be 4, 1 through 10. And so if we have a set number in mind, typically, then we're going to use a, a for loop to do this. So I'll type in four in space. You know, the great thing about uh, C++ Builder and a lot of these products would be the code completion. They do this for you. So it prints out the structure that we need to do this. And so let's go ahead and look at these three components. So the first one, it says I is equal to zero. And um, we had this done up here, so this may look redundant. But uh, we're going to use this, uh, this variable in a couple different ways, so I just went ahead and defined it. So we've set some counter, and I here is the counter. It's going to count how many times we go through the loop. Now, the second thing we have is a, is a conditional statement, and this is, this is important. Um, so the condition says that I'm going to keep looping uh, while I is less than 10. And so as soon as I is equal to or greater than 10, the loop just stops. And when we say loop, if we see these two brackets here, right, so everything between these two brackets, it's going to execute that code. Um, and in this case, we're expecting it to, to do it uh, 10 times. Um, so we have our definition for our, our counter. We have the conditional statement to say how many times we're going to execute this code. And then this is the increment operator. And this I++ plus plus means uh, make I, which is starting out at 0, after we've executed this code, uh, increase it by one is what this says. And so now I is going to be actual, is going to be equal to one after we've stepped through this the first time. And that operator right here is, uh, is pretty important because if we never went past 10, right, then the loop would run forever. And we'll talk about infinite loops in a little bit, but let's go ahead and put our first statement in here. So we're going to get a label. Now let's take label one. And we're going to update the text, and we'll make it equal to i. So let's go ahead and execute this. And when we click on our button, we can see 9. Now, a couple things here. Let's, let's go ahead and look, look at the code. So we have 10 in here. Why did it, it not equal 10? And the second question is, why didn't we see the other numbers? Um, so the computer the code executed so fast that we didn't see the other numbers. We just saw the last number. And again, that was 9. And the reason it was 9 is because we said do this while i is less than 10. And so it never actually equals 10. If we change this operator, then we get 10, just like we expect. And so this is a really quick loop. Again, we could make this uh, 10,000, a million, a billion whatever we wanted, and the computer's going to do it that many times. Um, so let's do another one here, just to show you examples of what we can do. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to use the, uh, the character. So let's change this up, and let's say ch is equal to a. 
And then what we want to do is say while um, CH is less than or equal to, like we did before, Z, and then we want to increment CH. And let's look at the label. I'm going to use label 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. Okay, so now what happened is we counted from 1 to 10, and then we counted A through Z. And again, it just executes so fast that uh, you didn't see it. We could put something in there to slow it down so you could see it if you wanted to. But I think you're getting the gist just from this video. Um, and when we look at the structure, um, what we see is that we're executing this statement. We're setting I equal to 0. We're looking at our conditional, and then we're incrementing that. And we're doing this 10 times. And then this executes and finishes, and we go to the next loop. So this is one after another. This is um, serial, right? We do one thing, and then we do something else. But let's say, you know, what if my program said that I need to count from A to Z 10 times? How would we, how would we do that? Well, what we need to do is... Uh, this is called a nested for loop, and we're nesting them together. So if I put one for loop inside of another one, right, then what will happen, let me clean this up so we can see it here. So then what happens is um, uh, we have i equal to 0. We're going to execute this code, which includes counting from a to z, and then we're going to increment by i. So then it goes back up to the top then i is equal to 1, and we're going to execute this again. And so this way, we count to from we count a to z, in this case, uh, 10 times. Actually, it's 11 times because we're starting at 0. If we wanted it to be 10, we could do this right here. Um, but realize that this is going to take longer. Now, if we hit run again, yeah, there was a little bit of a change. You probably wouldn't notice it a lot, but let's do this. Let's change this to 10,000. Now there's gonna, there should be a, a delay. And there's definitely a delay. Not sure how long the delay is going to be, but it's still going. There we go. So we counted from A to Z 10,000 times. So let's go ahead and get out of here. So you can see just by changing this up uh, how we've changed the flow and the performance of our, of our application, right? Because it's easy to count to 10,000. It's tougher to count, or it takes longer to count to, to from A to Z 10,000 times. That's a different thing. Now, the second thing that we want to look at, uh, another looping structure, is called a while. Um, so let's go ahead and get our I, our integer, and we're going to set that back to 0. Because when we left this loop, I was left at 10, right? And so we want to set that back to 0 so we don't get unexpected results down here. Now, the while is a little bit different. When I hit space here, uh, again, the computer does a code complete, and there's not a lot there, right? So at first, this looks pretty simple. Well, while, while, while something is true, that's what uh, the one means. One is true, zero is false. So let's put in here, while i is less than five, um, you know, let's, let's uh, execute something. Let me bring this back up. I find my cursor. Okay, so we're going to say while um, i is less than 5, label 1, text, and we're going to make this equal to i, so we're just overriding what we did up here. Now, um, this looks, again, pretty straightforward, and you may be asking, well, if this is easier than uh, the for loop, why not just use while? So I want to show you a couple things here. So the first thing is going to be an infinite loop. And what I'll do, because you'll probably see this at some point, so we're going to run this. We'll hit the button. And, uh, you know, we have a screen lockup, right? I can't move this. I can't, I can't stop it. Uh, this is called an infinite loop. So let me kill this process. Here it is. So you can see it's not responding. So let's kill it. And now... Don't need to tell Microsoft where we've messed up. Okay, so let's go ahead and kill this. Now let's look at what happened. So what we told it is that while i 
is less than five uh, printout I and on the screen, and that's what it did. Now the problem is, is I is always less than five, and so it never quits. And so this infinite loop means it goes on infinity, and eventually, you know, your computer hangs, you may run out of memory, bad stuff happens. So you have to look for these infinite loops. And so on the for statement, it automatically put in here to increment I, but this one did not, right? So while loops are a little bit different. So what we'd have to do is say I is, you know, uh, let's increment I, and then we can, we'll go ahead and show you how it executes. And there we go, it counted the four. Uh, again, we didn't do the less than equal, but we could. Um, and so while loops are a little bit different, so the, the nuance that I like to do is that if I'm counting to a known number, uh, and this is just an example, right? But if I'm counting to a known number, let's say 10, or, um, you know, again, I can say adjust my radio while I'm at the red light. I know the red light 60 seconds, something like that, something straightforward. We tend to use for loops. Uh, we use while loops when we may not know how long something is. It is. So let me just bring up a browser and I'll try to give you an example. So if I go to slash dot, let's see. Okay. So if I'm here at this website, um, and let's say I wanted to create a parse or something to go out to the web and grab all the text and, and do something something neat with it, right? But th the key is I don't know how much text is on here. I don't know how many words are on here. So what I would do is create a while statement and basically say while there is more text. So I can test it to make sure there's text. And as long as there's text, I'm going to keep grabbing it. But when there when it runs out of text, when there's end of text is what we'll call it, then I want to stop the loop, right? So the key here is I don't know how long it is, but while the system is still giving me text, I'm going to process it. You can do the same thing if you open a, you know, a Word document. So let's say I want to open the Word document, take all the text out. While there are more words, keep doing this. And that's why the while statement is, uh, is useful because we don't know how long something is. Again, if we do know how long something is, then we'll tend to use a... Uh, a, uh, a for statement. So this is a subtle nuance, um, but I do want to point this out because you're going to see this in code. There are a couple different ways to do looping, but these are two of the key ones. And uh, just practice with with this a little bit, play around with them. Um, you know, you could uh, you could I increment steps um, uh, by two. You can do all kinds of things here to change around the conditionals, but realize they're kind of solving a similar problem looping. But they're they're kind of used in two different ways. And if you keep that in mind, I think you're I think you're going to be straight straight. So take care, and we'll see you in the next video.